So we're chatting about different investments and we are in, uh, talking about equity investments. And the first one we looked at was if you own up to 20%, don't really have significant influence on the company, then your asset is at fair value. So you make changes in the asset, make it go up or down depending on what the fair value is. And any of those changes in the fair value go to the income statement. So if it went up from last year to this year, whatever that change was is reflected in the income statement as an unrealized gain. And if it goes down, then it's an unrealized loss on the income statement. We also chatted about a little bit about the, the tax issues around that. Just as kind of a, a way for you to think about what, what the heck is a deferred tax liability? What is a deferred tax asset? And then we said, okay, if you own a little bit more or you have significant influence on the company, then we're going to use this thing called equity method accounting. So let's talk about equity method accounting. Okay, equity method accounting is simply whatever percentage I own of the company. So I'm going to look at the percentage that I own in the company. I'm going to take that percentage. I'm going to get their income statement, the company's income, whatever I'm uh, investing in. I'm going to take that percentage times their net income or loss and I'm going to recognize this in my income statement. Okay, I'm going to recognize that in my income statement. Whereas here, I'm just looking at changing or, or recognizing whatever the change in the fair value is. If this in equity investment gave me dividends, paid me dividends, I would just recognize dividend income, cash and dividend income. Here, and this one, completely different. I take a look at what their net income is and I take a percentage of that ownership and I put that on my income statement, loss or income. And if they pay me a dividend, I view that as a reduction in my investment, not as income. This is not income to me if we're doing equity method accounting. So let me, we'll just do a, a kind of a, a, a quick example. So say I bought 25% of a particular organization, I paid a million dollars for it. So I, I purchased it, paid cash. So we'll do our little assets equal liabilities plus equity. Okay, and so the first transaction is buying the investment. Here I've got cash and I have the investment account. So I buy the investment, cash goes down $1 million and investment goes up. $1 million. Equals zero plus zero, right? So this, this balances. During the year, they had net income of $500,000. This million dollars, I this gave me a 25% stake, right? So this is a 25% stake investment. So of this net income, 
I'm entitled to 25% of that or 125,000. So what's going to happen is my investment's going to go up 125,000 and my equity, my revenue or investment income is going to go up 125,000. My equity is going to go up 125,000. All right. So I recognize my share of the half a million dollar net income for the whole company. The company also decided to pay a dividend out of their income, where out of their retained earnings. So they paid a dividend. And I received 50,000. Company received 50,000. Well, here, this is, if they're paying me a dividend, that means their equity is going down. We'll find out, we'll learn about this when we get to equity, but their, their equities, the, the, the company I'm investing in, their equity is going down because they're giving me back some money. Well, then therefore, my investment should also go down. So what ends up happening is cash goes up 50,000 and the investment goes down 50,000. So the only time any when we're doing equity method accounting, the only time you're going to end up having anything hit earnings is your percentage share of the earnings. So this is equity method accounting, and this is when you have more than 25, you know, more than 20%, or you have less than 20%, but you have a significant influence. Then you have to use this method of accounting. And this is just for equity securities. The last one, the last piece of equity securities is what happens if you own greater than 50%? If you own greater than 50%, of an equity investment. And we own 50% plus of an equity investment. This now becomes, this has to be consolidated. in your financial statements. So you've got revenue, they've got revenue. Well, guess what? We're going to take their rev our revenue plus 50% of their revenue, and that's our total revenue. They've got expenses, we've got expenses. We're going to recognize our expenses plus 50% of their expenses, and now the, our financial statements are going to have total expenses. So we're going to consolidate these things, and we're also, if we don't own 100% of it, then we're also going to have minority holdings, right? Minority shareholders, if you will. So this one's very simple, right? We don't have to get into the mechanics of consolidation, but I just want you to know that when you own over 50% of an equity investment, you consolidate it in your financial. You bring all your financial statements together and report it as one set of financial statements. So we've got our less than 20%, at fair value, changes in fair value go through the income statement. We've got more than 20%, but less than 50. Now we're gonna use the equity method of accounting. And then if it's 50% or more, now we are consolidating their financial statements into our financial statements.